is a big guy, Stoutmeister here, and it's been a while since I did a commentary on a video, so why not do a commentary on this video that has caused quite a bit of controversy? And I was requested to do this video, and I just want to take a jab at the people in this video right now. Hmm. Enjoy! Christianity is being completely frozen out of America. No, it is not. Now, before I go any further into this commentary, I want to point out that I'm speaking from personal experience. Okay. This means I have experience with religious institutions. How is that so, Stoutmeister? Well, I spent a good chunk of time in both public school and Christian school. From 9th grade to 12th grade, I was at a Christian high school. And then from kindergarten to 8th grade, I was in numerous public schools. So I got a good perspective on both sides of the spectrum. Plus, I grew up in a religious family. I went to church, and I associated with a lot of good Christians and a lot of asshole Christians I ran into as well. So yeah, I do know what I'm talking about when it comes to this subject. Not to mention, I have this little thing called critical thinking, and it's this special thing where you think for yourself and you do extensive research on things that interest you, and it br helps broaden the mind quite a bit. It's something that not a lot of radical Christians have, but thankfully there are a small number of Christians among other religious and non-religious people that are very open-minded have critical thinking as well. Continuing the commentary. Why can't I pray in school? Because it is unconstitutional and illegal if it is forced for you to do so. If you want to pray and it's your own free will, you have the freedom to do so. Nobody is going to force that on you in the school unless they want some lawsuit on them. If you're too afraid to pray in the open areas where everyone can see you, go to a bathroom and pray. And even if you don't want to pray in school, I'm pretty sure that God knows your intentions, that God knows that you're a good Christian overall. I don't think he's going to be concerned if you don't pray in a public school. Why do I have to check my religion at the door? Why can't I write about God in my school papers? Probably because uh, writing about God in a school paper will most likely turn into preaching and it'll become a biased paper rather than something unbiased, maybe? Why do I have to tolerate people cursing my God, but I am not allowed to talk about God in my faith? I can understand people bashing you for being a Christian. Thankfully, that is a small percentage. A lot of people don't really have a problem with you having a religion, as long as you aren't shoving it down their throats. Why are they taking God out of my history books? Oh, really? America is a Christian nation. Is that where you're getting at, uh, ma'am? Uh, I'll talk about that a little further into this video. Why do they teach every other theory in science except creation? Because according to them, creationism is based on faith. Yes, creationism uses a little bit of science, but it mostly relies on faith. Now, as far as teaching the subject of religion, I really don't have a problem with any public school having classes on religion, but it should not be talking about only Christianity. They should at least cover the major religions like Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Buddhism, Taoism, so on and so forth. But the problem with that is it's going to cause a big uproar, especially with the extremist Muslim parents that are living in America that love to cause uproars whenever someone depicts Muhammad in a drawing or some shit. The public schooling system wants to avoid lawsuits. That's why they avoid talking about religion as much as they can. Why am I called names because I believe in marriage the way God designed it? Oh, God. <laughs> 
Did you know that also in the Bible, Abraham had more than one wife? And God saw that as okay, and in fact, it was very necessary to populate the earth at that time. As well as Solomon having hundreds of different women, both as his concubines, basically friends with benefits, and he had hundreds of wives as well, totaling up to a thousand women. You can also see numerous stories about people with numerous wives in the Bible, more particularly the Old Testament. And as far as the sanctity of marriage, as a nation, as the United States of America, do we really have any more room to talk about this? considering our divorce rates and a lot of the reasons why we get married. Do these people even know the history of marriage? I already did a couple of videos covering this subject, and I don't feel like repeating myself in this video, so I'm going to leave a link for that in the description down below, or I'm going to put some annotations up there. Either way, you can click on those links, and you can see my views on that from there, as well as pointing out valid facts about the sanctity of marriage. Some even call us hateful, hypocrites, unloving, close-minded, bigots. That's because the radical Christians are bigots and hateful, considering the fact that they like to say, if you don't worship our God, you're going straight to hell. You're a heathen. There are a good chunk of Christians, especially in public school, that like to bully people for dressing up as goth for being homosexual, for pretty much any reason. Pretty much a lot of these Christians at these public schools especially tend to be the Air Apostle, Abercrombie, and Fitch type people that if you don't look like them, if you don't associate with the same type of people as them, if you don't come from a high class suburbia area, you are different, therefore you're a fucking heathen. I know about this because I saw this a lot. In public school and I saw a good chunk of this as well at my Christian school but the thing with my Christian school is it was full of these snobs anyway while the goths and all those type of people were at a very small percentage and if they had anything to hide like homosexuality they took advantage of hiding that because you would get ridiculed for that and if the school found out that you were homosexual you got your ass kicked out Especially if you do not know the people, the higher-ups in the school. There are two lesbians that got kicked out of my school for being lesbian my freshman year. Why can't Tim Tebow praise God after making a touchdown without causing a national uproar? Maybe because he's in everyone's face about it. And the fact that he wasn't really that good of a football player anyway. And if you're trying to say that all sports stars that are Christian are being attacked... That is absolute bullshit. Ryan Sheckler, professional skateboarder, has proclaimed to be a Christian. No one attacks him for that. Christian Hosoi, legendary skateboarder from the 1980s. He found God in prison. Nobody attacks him for that. And I could go on with numerous sports stars in skateboarding and outside of skateboarding that are Christian and or of other religions and they're not ridiculed for them because a lot of these people are not in your face about it like Tim Tebow was. The football coach at Ridgeland High School in Georgia was investigated by the school board. Did he abuse a student? Is he a terrorist? He allowed local churches to feed his football team. <gasps> I know a little bit about this story though. Uh, let's read a little bit on this article right here. On game day, coach Mark Moriakis takes the football team to a local church for dinner. We understand that at these events, the church's preacher sermonizes to the players about the Christian religion. News reports show that Moriakis leads the team in pre or post game prayers. Our complainant reports that Moriakis uses Bible verses on team gear, such as shirts, and in speeches to excite the team. Finally, we have been told that Moriakis pressures players to attend a Christian football camp 
that the players have to pay for, and that Moriacus looks down upon those who do not attend. Hmm. <laughs> and all they were doing was feeding them food. Oh, you forgot about the little part where they're pushing their views onto other people, breaking the constitutional laws of pushing your views on other people. Because the First Amendment talks about fundamental freedoms. One of those fundamental freedoms, freedom of religion. And we can't forget about separation of church and state also. The church should not have that much impact on the school, especially on that level. Now, if they want to bring food to the football players, that's fine. But to force their views on you, that is completely different. So take your sarcasm gasps and shove them up your asses, please. Do it for all of us watching. In public school, I'm called lesbian or gay for not kissing or for wanting to save myself from marriage. You're called lesbian or gay because you're not willing to kiss before marriage. That has to be one of the biggest exaggerations I have ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> no, I'm not putting down people that want to save themselves for marriage. That's the safest way to be sure that you don't contract any STDs and all that other shit. But that claim has to be really exaggerated or a big fat lie altogether. Or you must not know what the word lesbian means. In public school, dating is an obligation. Now, it does suck that the public schooling system has to put all this peer pressure on the young. I can agree with you there. When I was younger and in public school, you want to know what the peer pressure was? Smoking cigarettes right in middle school, at the beginning of middle school. Then as we got into 8th grade and then we go into private Christian schools, and my friends were in public high school, the peer pressure progressively turns into harder drugs, drinking, and all sorts of stuff right there. You had the same pressures in Christian school also. The difference is, a lot of these people that go to these Christian schools have rich parents, and they can afford the drugs, and they can afford the alcohol. In public school, people are rude and disrespectful towards Christians. They are not disrespectful just towards Christians. You're gonna find your assholes anywhere. Public schools are nothing more than training grounds for our youth for 13 years to prepare for the real world when it comes to socialization, when it comes to putting up with bullies. It is a sad fact of life. I'm sorry that there are Christians out there that are legitimately getting bullied for being a Christian, but a lot of times that is not the case at all. A lot of times, that is the exact opposite, as a matter of fact. Bullying is common. Ah, uh, thank you for pointing out the obvious there. Everyone has been a victim of bullying at one point in their time. The difference is how we handle it. What we see in our health classes. Sex education. Fourth grade and up. Is pornography. Sex education is pornography. Sex education. You're talking about the scientific part of sex education, right? Because that's meant to teach you about how your sexual organs work. Do you even know the definition of pornography? In case you don't know the definition of pornography, here is the definition of pornography that I will read to you. The depiction of erotic behavior, as in pictures or writing, intended to cause sexual excitement material as books or a photograph that depicts erotic behavior and is intended to cause sexual excitement. The depiction of acts in a sensational manner so as to arouse a quick, intense emotional reaction. So, it's mostly talking about erotic behavior. Watching 
either one person pleasure themselves in a sexual manner by masturbating or by watching individuals have sex with each other, either orally or involving genitalia colliding with each other. Do you, do you honestly get turned on by scientific graphs such as this? How is that sexually arousing? Please tell me how a graph that is supposed to be teaching you about how your organs work to be sexually arousing? Uh, please explain this to me. People make fun of me because I don't believe in abortion. Probably another over-exaggeration right there. In public school, people believe Christians are goody goods and boring. Probably because a lot of these goody goody two shoe Christians don't want to get involved with anybody for the sole fact that they are not part of their church or part of their religion, maybe? Dirty jokes fill the hallways between classes. During class, before school, at lunch, after school, on the bus, off the bus. Get the idea? All dirty jokes! Oh no! Oh no, they're telling dirty jokes in public school. They're making fart jokes and penis jokes. Oh my brain can't take it! God forgive me for hearing these jokes! Ah! No. I I'm pretty sure if God is all knowing, He's not going to give a shit about a dirty joke if it's meant to be a joke. I'm pretty sure that God has more things to be concerned about than a dirty joke about farts and genitalia. I, I mean, we're talking about an omnipotent, all-powerful being here. Despite modern popular belief, America was founded as a Christian nation. Nope. 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 No. The majority of our founding fathers were deists, more particularly Thomas Jefferson, one of the founding fathers and presidents of the United States. He took the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, pretty much the New Testament, took out the divine miracles that Jesus performed in the Bible and made his own Bible, the Jefferson Bible. Which also goes against Revelations, which is the last book of the Bible, because if you add and take out of the Bible, then you have these plagues, and pretty much you're fucked if you add or take anything out of the Bible. Which, I'm pretty sure the people that distribute the modern day Bibles are going to be fucked in that area, as well as the Catholic Church way back when, when they talked about the Gospels. Yes, there were more than four Gospels at the time. And people picked their favorite books. That's how we have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So, yeah, you can see how sacred the Word of God really is. Not to mention the Council of Nicaea changing the birth date of Christ to December 25th to compete with the Roman pagan holidays that were taking place at that time. My grandparents tell me that the church used to be the center of the community. You know what the church used to be? The church used to be a source of power, especially over in Europe, when the Catholic Church pretty much ruled over everything. There's one tax that they really did that pretty much is blasphemy, at least I consider it blasphemy. These priests going to people's houses collecting tax money, and if you gave them the tax money, your sins were absolved for the next week. So pretty much you could rape, murder, steal, gamble, so on and so forth for the next week until tax season came up. So yeah, the church being the centerfold of power in the community, that's that has never worked really well in history. History should be able to tell you this, but when we have ignorance being spread by the all-powerful with great charisma and great looks in a great robe and a great suit, if they're wearing a suit in favor of the robe and so on and so forth.
You ready for your miracle? Yes, I'm looking for my miracle. What city are you calling from? I'm calling from Des Moines, Iowa. Have you called for the anointing for a handkerchief? Have I, have I called for my handkerchief? Uh-huh. All right, how can we pray for you this morning? Yeah, well, I, 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 I was actually having a lot of pain in my, my elbows and whatnot. Okay. Is it hurting right now? It, yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's hurting right now. I, I really, I, I, I have to sit with my elbows and my arms folded all day long. I can't move. And are they hurting right now? Yeah, yes, it's hurting right now. All right, listen, God's getting ready to heal yeah. your body. Hear the Lord saying that the miracles that you've been standing in the gap waiting for, that the miracles is on its way right now. And God is healing your body right now. I want you to shake those arms right now and move those elbows right now. Because I'm shaking them. all because God is healing you Who, right now. Did you feel that? No, I didn't. T tell me how you feel now. I, I still feel the pain, but the pain. It, But the pain is leaving out right now. In school, prayer and pledge to the flag was welcomed and appreciated. Pledging to the flag of the United States was forced. If it was not forced, it was most certainly forced on you by the community, because if you even questioned that, guess what? You were ridiculed and you were called unpatriotic. You were seen as a heathen for not acknowledging the flag of the United States of America in that way. No one would dare not to stand, place their hand over their heart, and recite the pledge. America was once a force for good. America was a force for good. Uh, I'm not going to say that America was bad all the time, but there was a time where we escaped from Europe to escape religious persecution and all the ridiculous taxes that were being raised over there. So we immigrated onto this new land that was soon to be America. And guess what? We love power so much that we're going to take the land away from the Indians. We're going to keep pushing them west until they have nothing left. Not saying that America is all that evil, but it was most certainly not that good 100% of the time. Not to mention that our founding fathers had slaves during the writing of the Bill of Rights. Slavery was not absolved until the Civil War era. America was once the hope for the world. What happened? In 1962, the Supreme Court ruled that prayer was unconstitutional in schools. In 1963, the courts ruled the Bible unconstitutional. Bullshit, 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 bull fucking shit. Here is my crucifix. I hope you can handle my crucifix. The Bible is unconstitutional if it's being forced on you. Prayer is unconstitutional if it's forced on you. If it's voluntary, then it's not unconstitutional at all. You're doing it on your own free will. No institution should force you to partake in a religious ritual if you don't fucking want to. That is just the way it is. And that is also bullshit because when I was in middle school, we had an after school group called Cults for Christ. The high school next to the middle school I went to also had the same group, but for high schoolers. That's where everyone got together and got to do activities, got to talk about the Bible, got to pray, do all that great stuff. And again, I'm talking about public school. And I live in the Bible Belt area, so it'd be a little more appropriate to do that, but yeah. Not all public schools bash on religion that way, nor do they ban it from the schools. As a matter of fact, 78% of Americans claim to be Christian. So, uh, take that whole minority shit and shove it up your ass, please. Saying that if the Ten Commandments were read in school, a student might feel inclined to follow them. Really? For over 50 years, Christians have been unwilling to get involved. 
People who do not love our God have stolen our country. Oh my fucking God. If you do not love our God, our God, if you don't acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the Son and is God, if you don't acknowledge the Holy Trinity, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, then you stole our country. No. No. As a matter of fact, Christianity wants to do nothing but be in the history books and take credit for everything that is established. That is what the people in the Christian institutions want to do. Not the individual Christians that have a, their head screwed on, right? But the churches as a whole, the lunatics that are of the Christian faith, they want to erase any other history and make it look like everything was part of God. Everything in history is God. It doesn't matter if it's accurate or not. Fuck you for having a different view. And again, America was not founded by Christian principles. There may have been some Christian influences, sure, but our founding fathers wanted to abolish forced religion because of how Europe has suffered from the Catholic Church. Jesus said we are salt and light. Salt and light melt ice. It is time for a thaw. President Ronald Reagan called America a shining light on a hill, a beacon of hope for the world to see. Ronald Reagan was also in favor of voluntary prayer, not forced prayer. Let me read a quote from Ronald Reagan really quick. Time has come for this Congress to give a majority of American families what they want for their children, the firm assurance that children can hold voluntary prayers in their schools, just as the Congress itself begins each of its daily sessions with an opening prayer. Now, there are two key things that you gotta point out in this little quote right here. The first part I want you to look at is majority of American families. Acknowledging that the majority of American families practice the Christian religion. The second part I want you to look at, voluntary prayer. That means these children should have the right to pray in school if they want to. They should not be forced by the school to pray or partake in any religious rituals if they don't want to. We are going to let our little American lights shine. Through the power of Jesus Christ we proclaim today. We refuse to be frozen out of the public square. Our voices will be heard. Let's reverse it. Oh, well, let's reverse it. Uh, so let's make it to where the Christians are the majority, and if anybody is an atheist, agnostic, deist, Buddhist, Hinduist, Taoist, and any other religion that is not Christian, let's persecute them. Let's harass them some more. When you already do that on your own, and again, I'm referring to these extremists. I just have to point this out there throughout the video because I know there are people that are going to have their short attention spans and they're going to take some of the things I say the wrong way, so just got to make that clear. Fix it. We are going to turn it around. This is a call to our generation. We are calling on the youth of America to join us. At Reach America, we are creating a Christ-centered counterculture, a C4 community. Christ-centered counterculture? Hmm. C4. Uh, speaking of C4, uh, here's a C4 bomb explosion. A place filled with Christian teens on a mission to reach America and our friends for Christ. Christ and our country matter to us. At Reach America, we are learning to lead our generation. We are servants, encouragers. We are learning to hear God's voice and adjust our lives to His will. We are encouragers. Hmm. We are encouragers by forcing your views onto people. By making people feel like shit if they are either confused by your beliefs or if they don't totally want to follow them at all. Yeah, great job on twisting your words around there. Great job. God is changing our lives. We are building life-changing relationships. 
Okay, God is not changing your lives. You guys most likely grew up in a religious household that forced religion on you. You also probably went to a religious church where the preacher forced religion down your throat. And if you spoke up in church, you were called out, you were considered a heathen, you were slandered, your character was defamed. Just a lot of unimaginable shit happened to you. A lot of bullying and harassment happened to you if you spoke out or questioned anything about the Bible or what the preacher had to say. We are a family. We are a team. We are an army. Christ is our commander. Oh, this is beginning to sound a lot like Jesus Camp. Anybody remember that documentary? His will is our charge. We are impacting our friends, our families, our community, our state, our country. We are in a war for the hearts and souls of our generation. We are at a war! Yep, these kids probably were at Jesus Camp at some point in their lives, or a camp similar to that. Sounds very identical to Becky Fisher's Jesus Camp. Mmm. If anybody remembers that documentary, Becky Fisher basically breaks these kids down by manipulating them. And pretty much, she made a statement where she wanted the children to be as strong as the Islamic children that were trained by the Islamic parents and the Taliban to be suicidal bombers. But the only difference is, we're doing it with the Bible! Yep, don't believe me? I'm gonna have the Jesus Camp documentary in the description down below. And we know it. Failure is not an option. We are going to win this war. We're gonna win this war! Failure's not an option, we're an army, fuck yeah! Yep, sounds a lot like Jesus Camp to me. The Christian version of the Taliban, pretty much. If God be for us, who can be against us? What a way to twist Romans to suit your needs. The thaw has begun. High school Christian teens, join us. Join us. Join us at Reach America. In the fight for our generation. For our nation. For our future. In America. We still hold these truths to be self-evident. That all men are created equal. That they are endowed by their creator. With certain unalienable rights. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. What a way to take what the forefathers wanted for this country and twist it for your own needs. And one thing I forgot to point out in this video earlier, uh, as far as the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, God was not put in the Pledge of Allegiance until 1954 by President Eisenhower, when we wanted to prove to the godless heathens in communist Russia that we were a Christian nation. So it wasn't so much having genuine faith in the Christian God, it was a pissing contest with the communists in Russia during the Cold War. That's all it pretty much was. Thus begins more cramming down your throats with the religious bullshit. Join the movement at Reach America. Let's reach our communities. Let's reach our states. Let's reach America. America! Fuck yeah! Adults, please pray for us. Support us. And get involved. Together, looking to Christ as a strength, the thaw will be complete, and America will be one nation under God. Again. America will be one nation under God. Them goddamn homosexuals, they're contaminating this land of God over here. I don't understand why them goddamn homosexuals can't be normal like the rest of us Americans. Eat McDonald's every day, having sex with their sisters, and donkeys and pigs. <laughs> no. 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 This fucking video right here. Oh, and you know it's a great video 
because of the ratings and the comments being disabled. So you know for sure that they value feedback. And since uh, they're too good for comments and uh, thumbs ups and thumbs downs, uh, let's do the honors of uh, having this video uploaded onto YouTube so that hopefully the people running Reach America can see this video right here among other videos on their video as well. And before I end this video right here, before my throat gives out anymore, Buggy has something to say right here. Look at these sexy black bold letters right here. These bold letters say a giant cup of shut the fuck up. That means shut the fuck up, get your heads out of your asses, and actually learn some fucking history that is outside of what you're being taught at church. Now, it's one thing to be a Christian after being knowledgeable of the subject and being open-minded and having your head screwed on right, but to be this narrow-minded, to shut anybody out for being different, is just plain bullshit. That's all I really gotta say about this. Uh, let me get a drink of this before my throat gives out anymore. Cheers, motherfuckers! Thank you for making my throat almost give out in this video today. Today's thirst quencher and energy provider is brought to you by Orange Amp. It is fucking awesome. That's all I gotta say about that. Stay tuned for more videos. Take care. See you later. Cueing Epic Outro Music now.